sex, money, and power. What is the truth behind these three energies and what do they share in common? In this video, I'll be joined by Sydney Campos. Her and I have an exciting activation for you around these energy types and around magnetism and mastering magnetism in your life and what that is going to look like on a day-to-day -day basis. How are you flowing these powerful energies? How are you stepping into more mastery, more magnetism around money, around power and influence, around your sexuality? How do these things show up in your life? How do we step into them and transform the shadows that often hide there into gifts, into offerings, into power, into mastery, into being magnetic, to being magnetic and potent, being magnetic and powerful. This is, this is what the world is revolving around. If you look around at the world, the places people put the most money, the most attention, the most time, the most energy are around sex, money, and power, straight up. No matter what field, what program you're in, no matter what mindset, what part of the world. And so that's where we want to go into mastery. We want to go into magnetism because this is where, this is where the magic is living. So if we're, not, if we're not running from these powers and we're really showing up to them and stepping into them, what does that look like? Yes. Yes, there she is. <laughs> Hello, my cosmic twin. How are you? Aloha, twin. I'm so well. How are you doing this fine day? I'm amazing. I'm just getting some beautiful sunshine in preparation for our, our incredible download session. I'm just going to turn up on my volume here. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Oh. So I was thinking we start with a little breath activation, get really grounded, create that pillar of light, and then we'll just go right in. How about that? Right cool. Yeah, let's do it. Let's so any, anyone watching now or later, I invite you into this. Just closing the eyes, straightening the spine. We're going to take three deep breaths into these energy types, sex, money, and power. Breathing into the sacrum, the belly, and the heart. First breath comes in. Arriving here, second breath comes in. We'll hold that breath out, hold it out a bit, exhaling. A big inhale comes in. Breathing in a little more. Coming into the heart space, anchoring gratitude, anchoring the frequency of magnetism and letting anything that's not that go. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Woo. We're I'm here now. Excited. We're oh, present. I'm hot now. Wow. <laughs> I know, right? I got a lot of energy. I'm riding a flow state today. So I was just, I was saying before you hopped on, you know, if you look around in the world, and this is just a, this is an opinion, this is an experiment. Where do people put the most time, money, and attention? And I would, I would posit that it are, it is these three types, sex, money, and power. Yeah, absolutely. These this are is... our survival. These are like the things that we need to survive at a base level, right? This is why these energies carry with them the most controversy, the most like intensity, the most shame, the most like yucky, icky, stuck feelings tends to be where most people's issues like are in their lives, right? Especially around sex, definitely. But the connection between all three, it's like, it's so fascinating to me because it's like, it's almost like we can all intuitively feel like, oh, they're all kind of the same and they're all interrelated. They're all connected, yes, but do we ever really stop to actually ask why or how or see how these energies actually interplay in our own lives? And, and really, something I'm really excited about, of course, totally divine timing. Um, for those of you that know Joe Dispenza, I know, Kevin, you probably know exactly oh, yeah. what I'm talking about. And the whole concept of, you know, the biology of belief and you know epigenetics and the fact that we can hack our systems like we are not born one way we are constantly evolving yes. we are constantly shifting right and something i was reading about last night which is so apropos for this conversation when it comes to survival which i just taught about yesterday in my master class it's like money sex and power are all about survival and not only that within our patriarchy right capitalistic system it's like further amplified, especially oh, yeah. 
pertaining to money and especially pertaining to how sexual power and our innate life force is repressed mm. in order for our individual power, right, to be repressed, to be stagnated. And I'm just really interested in how this all actually mirrors in our physiological system when we talk about magnetism and letting the energy in our physical body actually flow as it naturally wants to so that we just emanate such a radiant magnetic field mm. that's so clear to attract, to create exactly what we want. Yes, yes. I love that. I love, I love Joe Dispenza. Shout out to Joe Dispenza. You know, that's, that's powerful work. And I love how you brought up the physiological basis, right? Like physiologically, the neurotransmitters, the hormonal pathways inside of us, ones that come to mind are serotonin, testosterone, estrogen, dopamine. These are very real channels in the brain body system that pertain to a sexual energy or charge. We can also look at it as life force, kundalini shakti, mm -hmm. the very essence of that magnetic force that the people who are flowing this the most are making the most money and are getting the most power, right? Or they have the most attention because these energies are linked together in the body and they actually mm -hmm. manifest in a similar way. Mm -hmm. And so what, what for you, Sydney, like if we want to talk about magnetism and staying magnetic, cultivating a magnetic field, let's just start with the most, let's, let's start with level one, the most basic thing for these three types? Like what, what is a linked practice or a perspective? For creating a, a magnetic, a magnetic, well, this is, let me start, I can't help but like start by addressing what I see to be the most common like issues sure. like, in, in the way of just being, I mean, my belief and knowing is that our natural state and the natural divine design of our body is to be incredibly magnetic, is to cast out from our heart center, like a massive field, a massive field. Like we are a magnet physiologically. We are a, we are a giant magnet, and we are designed literally using. This is like you know law of attraction 101. But like literally, we're designed through the power of our not only our beliefs but really our underlying feelings. It's our feelings. This is an energy game. Mm. Energy, emotion, emotion. We are designed with our emotions to feel right? Certain states that then bring about certain physical manifestations in our reality. And this is our natural state is just to create, 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 create. We're creating it all anyway. So if you're creating things that you don't <laughs> like, chances are your energy isn't flowing in alignment, right? And right. you're not actually in your clear, clearest, like possible flow. Your field maybe has some stuck stuff in it that's blocking your ability to manifest and create and receive. And so just starting there at like the basic level, like your natural state of being is to be completely magnetic, is to be a magnet for creating everything that you want, is to be like a, you're a desire machine. You're, we are all like desire vehicles. That's why mm. we're, I believe why we're here on earth is to feel our desires, be turned on by our desires, not just in a sexual sense, but why not be turned on in a sexual sense about life? Why are you not fully turned on about your life, about your purpose, about how you spend your time, mm, about what you're on. creating. Why not be fully turned on like it's sexy? It should be, right? Why else are we alive? Why else are we in a body other than to feel like the full pleasure? And literally, like, I believe we're designed to be in an orgasmic state of bliss, but we can't really have that if we're in the societal structure in which we currently exist, right? That doesn't really work. Then a lot of the different systems and oppressive institutions in place kind of fall apart. Yes, so yes. So there's, there's a lot here, but just to premise the whole conversation with your natural state of being is magnetic, is to be like in a very healthy flow of energy, is to be radiant, is to be a manifester. And yet stuff gets in the way as we grow up, as we have conditioning, yes. as we have societal, family trauma, whatever it is, it's all perfect. And everyone has a bunch of stuff that just gets stuck and it gets stuck. First and foremost, it gets stuck in the body through experience, especially through various trauma, which is all processed, you know, right. very uniquely in each one of us. But the stuck stuff in the body creates disease and, and creates all sorts of issues, but really creates resistance and difficulty when it comes to being able to feel easeful in magnetizing what you truly desire and can even be very, let's say, difficult when it comes to like, like I see this really commonly, like in this broader conversation we're having, a real common challenge that I, I find people have is like, 
just being able to trust themselves, like to trust their desire, wow. to trust their good feelings, right? It's like, mm. how, how deeply is it conditioned in our collective consciousness to like not trust our intuition, to not trust what we know to be true, to not trust what we want, to not fully allow, right? Like what turns me on, what turns you on, like to not fully honor that and follow that, to instead have like a shame, a shame about what turns you on about life in any which way, sexually or otherwise to have shame about that because you care about fitting in because the society where right. it's all about homogenization, fitting in, follow the leader, be understood. Don't, don't like disrupt, don't disrupt the status quo. It's like incredibly oppressive, right? So the sex, money and power, like our natural states of being, right? To be orgasmically, ecstatically blissful, I would say, to be like radiantly abundant, like, like, Feel into that, you guys. Like, feel into what it is like to live life as a moment-to-moment, -moment, like, state of bliss. Yes. Presence. Like, pure presence and total power, creating whatever you want. Being so turned on by your purpose, by your life, your creative life force just flowing and attracting to you everything that you need to just grow it and grow it and grow it. It's so much fun. Why else are we here, you know? Exactly. Why else are we here, really? This is our natural state. So I don't know if I answered your question, but that's no, you, alive you, for me right now. No, you <laughs> answered it and you made so much alive. Like this, this is, and these are important points to like drop into. The state of magnetic sexual pleasure, of abundance and of attention and influence are natural. It's a natural mm -hmm. state. You look at an animal, you look at a child, they're radiating energy, they're radiating life force. And so this is important to understand that like, the trauma or your teacher or your mom or dad telling you, no, be quiet. Don't be so excited. No, don't play. Don't do that because that won't, that won't look good. Right? Like we want society to yeah. look good and look good, goodly upon us. This is a, this is a program to inhibit life force energy. And so I love what you said, Sydney. It's like, there's a block in your life right now. There's a block in my life right now. Why do I not have the cash flow? Why is my relationship unsatisfying? Why don't people pay attention to me? Where's my sense of power? Well, the first place to start is to go inside. What is your bliss? What turns you on? And what gets you into a passionate state of enthusiasm? Because this is the state and the energy signature which can sustain these activities that yes. will generate the magnetism, right? Yes. So it's like a deep dive into yes. yourself and being like, Almost like a child. You're a divine child. Yes. What makes you want That's to play it. and like bliss out? Yes. But yes. then ground that with action and ground that with words and like my lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I, I just want to bring it like, I want to bring it down to like, like, let's get into the shadow right now because like there yeah. are people seriously suffering right now, like deeply on this planet who are like, they have no idea, like it's just so, un the unconsciousness that we're alluding to here and all these different realms run so deep. It is so, so deep and pervasive and it's, it's currently being dismantled. It's falling apart, right? We see this like with the falling apart of all the different financial institutions and in numerous countries around the world in states of massive depression beyond repair. And, you know, it's, it's going to get worse maybe before it gets better. Like how much do you have to sure. struggle until you're finally ready to heal and do things differently? You know, global globalization, capitalist paradigm, right? And yet I know and believe that individually, when we take responsibility to make our own unconsciousness conscious, we actually have the power individually and in our various collectives to influence very naturally the collective consciousness raising on the planet, right? So yes. I really believe we're so powerful and in affecting this whole massive shift towards what I believe is liberation coming soon. And <laughs> something I really want to share is, um, you know, and really not even coming soon, it can, it can be here now. It's here now. It is it here, now. here now. Heaven, heaven on earth is a place within you now. And when you're occupying that state of being on a regular basis, better believe you see the outside world through literally a different dimension, a different kaleidoscopic lens, a different, right. like completely different realm of perception. But I want to share a, a more grounded, maybe like third dimensional experience just to share with uh, everyone, especially those of you that I don't know yet. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious, Kevin, to know your experience here too, because it's not like we just, I know for me, like I didn't just wake up one day, like, you know, I'm, totally enlightened when it comes to money, sex, and power. And I'm going to teach about this because I totally got this. Right. You know? Like, I'm good. Uh, no, actually, these areas have been probably the biggest pain points of my entire life, uh, particularly money 
Uh, I mean, all of them actually, you know, all of them, they're intrinsically linked, they're not separate. Kind of the paradox of this truth that we're downloading you with right now is that none of these energies are separate, they're one and the same. And for me, they all actually could be simplified into, again, not only the free flow of your energy, but really like how, how embodied are you in your personal power? And I would even disassociate from the word power, but just desire. They all mm. come down to desire. And are you listening to what you desire? Are you honoring your desire? Are you believing that you deserve to have what it is that you desire? And my favorite thing to look into when I'm supporting people in transcending, you know, all of these different dynamics to create more leadership, authenticity, intimacy, abundance in their life is to ask, you know, how's your sex life? And how are you showing up in your most vulnerable moments? when you have the opportunity to really take action on what you really desire, to feel your yes. best, to let maybe a whole new level of orgasmic, powerful, creative life force possibility come through, how are you showing up? Are you honoring what you want or are you caring about what the other person thinks? Are you honoring really what your body is telling you to, to create, to open up to, or are you in your mind? Are you afraid? Are you, you know, it's a mirror for how you're showing up for all of all other areas of your life. And for me, I didn't even know this, right? Like, I didn't even know this because what you don't know, you don't know, you don't, you know, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it goes so deep. Like, I, I'll just break it down really fast. Like, I, I basically, since I started having sex when I lost my virginity when I was 18, just started faking orgasms, like, for years, for basically, like, almost 10 years. Like, and then I, to the point where I just thought, like, my body was broken. Like, I just couldn't do it. And I had such wow. anxiety about, like, like I was in a, it was basically like I was performing for the other person and I had no sense of having my own experience, right? In this co-creative experience, it was all for the other person. Mm. And you better believe I was living my whole life like that, performing for everyone else. What was everyone else thinking of me? Am I good enough yet? Do you like me? Is this right? In every other area of my life. Wow. And guess how that showed up in my finances? Struggle, chaos, like never could really get it together with doing what I really wanted to do, you know, felt really um, underlying all of this is like a, a deep distrust in myself. And we could talk about the, the feminine and masculine, you know, dynamic here, extremely wounded feminine, don't trust that I'm taken care of, don't trust that I'm supported, don't trust that the universe is looking out for me, don't trust myself, obviously, because how am I showing up mm. when I'm given opportunities to feel good? I don't take care of myself to feel good, I don't deserve it, I'm in unworthiness, right. you know? and contrary to my divine design, which is to feel good. And it's like this repression of energy, repression of energy, stuck, stagnant, couldn't hold on to money, couldn't like be right. a container to hold money, couldn't align with my powerful gifts, couldn't allow myself to be seen, couldn't speak my truth, right? And and so that that was like a huge pattern. And when I got clear on the, the like literally, it was as simple as like the faking orgasms, and my business not being able to grow, when I got clear on the, the connection between those two and all the dynamics that I just alluded to, it was like, but like I mean, literally, yeah. it was like quantum leap, huge growth in my business. And not only that, like materially, but amplified power beyond belief in the way that I show up to channel, to teach, to coach, like just so much more clarity, so much more like presence, you know, I would say yes. presence more than anything, just like a very commanding, clear, grounded, affirming presence from that, you know, and the journey continues, but I just want to share that example because I know a lot of people, men and women relate to that, like having different shame around, you know, your pleasure, what helps you feel good, what you're turned on by having shame about that. And there's nothing shameful about your desires. Your desires are the unique keys helping you to align with your purpose. As you follow your desire, you're naturally guided to your divine purpose, to your divine assignment, which naturally when you're in service to that you're not even thinking about money money is just there it's right. not even in your consciousness you're just in abundance because you're loving your life completely fulfilled and turned on and you're in service and purpose and th yes. those those energies will call in more i mean this first off thank you for sharing sydney it's so powerful i think a lot of women and men watching this can relate from one side to the other and yeah starting with vulnerability is good you know when you look at these three topics, sex, money, and power, sex is the one, I think you nailed it, Sydney, is the one that's most rooted because it's in the body. And it's the most like visceral and experiential and the most vulnerable, whereas the money and power can be a little abstract sometimes. So yeah. I'll share about some of my journey. Like, you know, I was raised Catholic, so I very much 
took on this Texan conservative paradigm of no sex before marriage. I went full celibate. Any girl I was with, you know, I was very like forefront about this. And because of that, I was noticing the ways I wasn't in my power. I didn't feel vital. I didn't feel like a king. I didn't feel like I could command presence. I didn't feel in love with my girlfriends in high school. And then I carried this on into college in the early years. This was so painful to me. And I didn't understand that by blocking my desire and like, you know, I had a lot of energy and I was a very sexual being, but I had no outlet because I wanted to be a good boy. This is the program I fed into. I wanted to be a good boy and good Catholic Texan boys. You know, I'm from the, I'm from the dusty deserts of Texas. A good boy doesn't, he doesn't knock boots (laughs) until he's married. No, you're not. We're from the same planet somewhere else. <laughs> I know. I, I feel like we're Pleiadian, but someone can yeah. fact check us in the, on watching this. But <laughs> in, this, in this life, I was born in, in Texas, and I went all in on that identity to, to my suffering, to my suffering. I didn't work a powerful job. I didn't have money flow. I didn't have power and influence in my tribe. I actually was very reactive, and I became a recluse and actually isolated myself until, you know, fast forward – me losing my virginity and like having sex for the first time and fully expressing myself, it was like a a weight just came off. You know, I was just like, oh, this is what everybody was doing that I couldn't do. And how much time did I stay trapped in this good boy paradigm? And in the same way, if you're watching this as a man, like how are you being a good boy in bed and in your business? We're we're trying to, we're drawing the full alchemy circle here, Sydney, from the bedroom to the boardroom. That's it. That's what this is. That's it. And it's the stuff that no one talks about, you know, like, I'm just so I'm really I'm very I'm like done. I'm extremely dissatisfied having conversations about the surface level things that I know are like, you know, common areas of pain. I understand that and I understand it's important to speak to that to some extent. And I'm so passionate about like, let's get to the root. Like, let's get to the root of what's really going on. Like, you don't have a money mindset issue. You have an energy issue. Like your energy isn't flowing. Why not? Why are you not allowing yourself to feel good? Mm. What what do you want? Can you listen? What 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 happened to you in your life where you learned that it wasn't safe to hear your truth, that it wasn't safe to like honor your desire, that it wasn't safe to be in your body, that it wasn't safe to feel good in your body. Whoa. Body shame. You brought up shame. Like If you look at the energetic vibrations of energy and motion, AKA emotion, the lowest vibration that will shut down your field the most is shame and not shame from the outside, not guilt trips, but but shame on the inside, you know? And as you were saying, like you're stuck in your energy, you're stuck in your business and your marriage and your relationship. Why? Because the energy wants to flow. It's, it's rising and falling. There's a circuit. You know, we can go, I can go deep into the metaphysics of that and like the practices, but just trust me and and find it in your own body right now. There's a circuit of energy that wants to live down in the sacrum, in your belly, below your belly, in your sex center, in your pelvis. There is a lot of energy. There is a lot of energy. Physiologically, there's a lot of energy. Can we connect the first three chakras to money, sex, and power? I think we can. Bingo. Oh my God. Guess what? These are the energy centers that are most shut down. This is like we can talk about the survival, like victim paradigm of the collective consciousness that we're currently evolving out of. And it's like we're all up here. We're in our upper chakras. We're in our mind. We're in our intellect, which has been extremely overpowered. Everyone's trying to drop into the heart and drop down even further into the root, right? And right. into the root of who you are. First three chakras the root chakra, home, security, sense of self, safety. Second chakra, sacral, sexuality, creativity, finances, abundance, ability to be in that creative flow of divine inspiration and then ex- receive the energy exchange in exchange for your gifts, for your contribution. And then the third, solar plexus, power, identity, how you appear yes. to the world and you perceive yourself. These are all connected. And look at physiologically when you breathe. I know this is something that I'm even continually, to, like, continually practicing is deeper abdominal breathing into these energy centers because most of us are stuck in our you up know, here a lot a lot of us can we're in the upper breathing right which is just physiologically uh let's say 
shallow emphasizing the survival kind of like parasympathetic protector nervous system and like body positioning we're like it's like anxiety and then that starts right. the whole chemical reaction that starts the whole thoughts to collect evidence about why you need to be anxious it's the whole <laughs> cycle and we just got to bring it down we got to bring it down and like free those energy centers up so that they can be part of this flow because these are literally your power centers this is like who you are and how oh, yeah. you are here to be right is like all in here and it's most people i would say don't have access like don't have full range full access to these like epic epic power centers right right no you're nailing it you're nailing it and it's so funny too sex money and power perfectly mudladara sparistana manipura like these are the <laughs> bad, these are the batteries of our being and you're absolutely right when we're stuck up here oh yeah everything's great business is business is you know good as usual yeah me and the wife are great yeah 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 you know you're like you're stuck and it's just <laughs> in your head and it's like thoughts and it's not true it's not true your body knows what's true. The body does not lie. If your root is grounded and you're breathing into it, you're eating well, you're sleeping well, you're meditating, you're doing yoga, whatever it is, you can feel it. Your body feels safe and secure. And therefore, what happens? Oh, wow, you can manifest a lot of money. You can manifest abundance. If your sacral creativity is offline, oh, yeah, you know, let me be in this tribe because it's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, I have a lot of influential friends, but oh. What do I actually desire? What does your pelvis want to do? This is where movement and breath and like the sexual experience itself, huge key and gateway into these energies. And then all this is building up into that solar plexus, Manipura, that sense of I am and I will and I do. That's where willpower comes from. Yes. So you want to link these energies up, security, creativity, sensuality, and then the willpower to act upon them. Yes. Then we can link yeah. that up into all this. Yeah. And I would add even to that, I think like the overarching, the, wow. I mean, the big thing that comes through for me is integrity. It's like, you know, what was the quickest way? People ask me often, like, what's the quickest way to activate alignment, to activate more magnetism, to clear energetic dreams in your life that are weighing you down from being in your natural magnetic state of flow and instant manifestation. It's integrity. And it requires you because you know better than anybody else what it is that you really need and how you may in fact be the only one in your way from having what you want. It's like, where are you out of integrity, especially in these areas, money, sex, and your ability to feel fully turned on. So power, let's like dissect that for a moment mm. too. Like power, we, I think we contextualize that sometimes as like an oppressive or authoritarian or you know, systemic like power. Sure. power. And that's like part of our cultural programming, maybe part of the family programming. But I like to think of power as like, turn on like you turn on the power you turn on the machine you turn on the light like power on is your power on like is your light on are you alive i like to think of power as aliveness aliveness like fully alive present in your body embodied here yes. now you know really connected and so so where are you where are you perhaps i'm talking to everybody listening now like get really honest with yourself in this moment where are you out of integrity when it comes to money, when it comes to sex, when it comes to your aliveness, your power, your energetic vitality and vibrance? Another way to ask that would be, in which ways are these areas of your life like feeling like a dream? Are there any particular parts of these different elements? And again, they're all the same energy, right? So right. paradox. But like, are there any energetic drains that are present for you right now that are keeping you from being fully alive, from feeling fully present, from feeling fully turned on, right? From being naturally very receptive as you become more fully alive, right? To contribute, to give, to radiate, to life, you naturally become more receptive for all that life has to offer back to you, right? right. So just a really important question to ask, like, and integrity maybe isn't something you necessarily figure out intellectually, it's like you feel it. You right. feel it, is there something you're doing that really doesn't feel good? Is there something that you're continuing to think you have to be committed to doing or obligated to do, maybe for someone else, maybe because you think other people expect you to do it and it really doesn't feel good for you. And why are you doing it? How is that serving you? What do you want instead? Yes. <sighs> Codes are being transmitted directly into the screen, y'all. This is it. This is it. I love what you're saying about power, like decontextualizing it. This is not power over. Yes. This is, this is empower. 
in power. Are you in power with your physiology, with your speech, with your emotions, with your thoughts? And I love what you're saying. Like these, uh, these thoughts going to collect evidence about why we should be shame, guilt, blame, anxious, you know, and this, and this you walk around in Babylon, you walk around the streets of the world and you're going to see a lot of people in that state. And so if you want to come alive and come online, you know, this, this is such a potent understanding. It's been so potent in my life to realize that my body and my bio energy, this is why I practice bioenergetics, comes first. Then, yeah. then I get to be a coach. Then I get to go and be a relationship. Then I get to be a boyfriend. I, not the other way around. It's not like yeah. I, I do these things and then I get to figure out, okay, where's my power? It's like, no, I, I gotta like, I gotta go deep into my root, into my belly. And I mean, my personal pathway, I'll just share. It's breath work, it's shaking. Like I literally cathart my body. Yeah. And it's a lot of like isometric, like very primal movement. You won't see me in the gym just lifting iron repetitively. Although I used to do that. Like I wanna, <laughs> I, I wanna be animalistically, primally embodied. So then I can play in these higher centers and like in, in like the divine, right? My intellect and all these ideas, you know, this is something I'm sure you've seen in, the, in our community, the spiritual new age, whatever you wanna call it. You see a lot of people so activated, channeling ideas, creative, intuitive. And yet you feel like it's not even a person there because they, ha they aren't tapping to those power centers. They're actually, they're up somewhere in here. Maybe the heart's really open, but there's no rootedness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I totally get what you mean. Um, yeah, one person in particular comes to mind. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my God, they're so in their head. I really <laughs> can resonate with them. Everybody seems to really like what they have to say, but I just can't connect. You know, and that's a challenge. And so I want to actually speak to um, some of the unconscious things also that involve that are involved in like it being challenging for someone to like come into their power or stand in their power or be in their power. Like, what does that mean? Right? Sure. These terms are tossed around a lot. Like, I just want to own my power. I want to stand in my power. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Right. And it's like, you are powerful. We just ascertained how you can source your power turn yourself on from within this is an internal process nothing outside of you is going to define your power unless you give your power to that thing right yeah. which is not <laughs> really fulfilling at all not really what you want and so some of the things i found um like most prominent like in the way of people just naturally embodying like listen you don't need to own your power you just need to be fully alive <laughs> that's what I would say Let's flip the it. thing in the way the thing in the way of that it's like the question kind of becomes irrelevant once we get to the root of what's actually going on right it's like it's like just own your aliveness own your desire be the embodiment of what you truly want in every moment be present with yourself enough to give yourself what you need right and yet some of the like common fears and issues that cer certainly coming from social conditioning a lot of which I myself have worked through in my path it's like well oh my god if I'm so powerful, if I'm so radiant, if I'm so alive, if I'm so turned on, if I'm so joyful, if I'm like in my fullest energetic capacity and like, oh my God, my fullest state of bliss, people aren't gonna like me. People aren't mm. gonna understand. My family will no longer understand me. I will no longer fit in. I don't fit in, I'll be alone. I'm gonna get in trouble. People are going to be threatened by me. People won't trust me. I mean, all sorts of stuff. But that's like the common, I found that to be the common thing. Like I used to have a very, especially for visionary, like I know we're talking to a lot of our visionary tribe here who are people that see the future paradigm that we're here to create, see this old system being dismantled, right? And we know we're here to create something new. We know that there's a better way for us all to live. We know that there's a way for us to all thrive in total abundance and joy. Mm. And just, we know why we're here. Yes. And yet, is there not a deep fear right along that path of holy shit am i crazy is if i'm this powerful if i can really see the future and activate this like incredible consciousness through my physical being and manifest this reality what if i'm alone what if nobody gets it what if i'm even like what if i'm even like threatened or hurt when right. i speak out my truth when i speak out my truth in opposition to this very powerful status quo and patriarchal structure that everyone else is like you know, confined wow. to, because this also connects to some deep, deep lineage and ancestral healing that we're all healing collectively right now, known as the witch wound, right? In yes. which, you know, generations and generations and generations of people 
also connected to sex, also connected to power, inevitably, right? In which, if you can imagine, millions and millions of men and women were murdered, murdered over generations and generations, right? Killed, just not even, you know, which is a whole nother thing, we can take that out of context, simply for just being teachers, for being wisdom keepers, for being yes. healers, for just yes. literally for just disrupting the status quo and speaking a powerful truth that and started asking questions about, well, why? Why is the system like this? Why are we taught to be like this? Do we really need to be like this? And these people were systematically killed, right? So there could also be a deep, uh, perhaps underlying unconscious energy present in many people that's wanting to be healed now, right? A fear of speaking your truth, yes. for fear that if you really do, for fear if you start to ask these questions that your soul is really wanting to inquire about and explore, there's a fear that you might be killed. Wow. Yeah, holding space for that, because that is something that I've been exploring all summer is this deep wound, not just witches, but men and women afraid to walk the mystic path or to walk yes. in full power because at many times on this earth, it was not safe to do that. Yes. And I want you to know if you're watching this, like, although the news may seem different, you know, swipe left on that. This is the most empowered and aligned time to be in your power, whatever that looks like. And you are safe. You're protected. We've already won. As you said, Sydney, we see the world that our hearts know is possible. We see the vision. We can feel it happening more and more every day. And guess what? You don't need to ask the world what it needs. You don't need to figure out the problems to solve. You just need to come alive. You got to come fully online. Yep. You get to be empowered in your physical body, mm -hmm. lower three chakras, your root, your sex organs, your belly. Like we need you to show up. This is how I want to show up. This is how I want to be met. This is how I want to see men and women yes. in the world. You know, this is deep. This is the deepest wound, maybe, Sydney, like in the deepest taboos there are. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's all the stuff that people have, like all their shame, all the secrets about. And, you know, my favorite, I'm just at this point, it's like, I feel like I've seen it all. I've just, I, I'm just so used to like telling the stuff, like stuff that I used to be ashamed about, like the orgasm thing is one. There's all sorts of different stuff. And I just, I don't. It's like, I'm looking for the things that I still carry shame about, right? And I have great compassion for how much, you know, people are carrying secrets or carrying like this energy that is literally like depleting your whole physical body, depleting your whole field, mm. depleting your whole life. Deple it's, it's like, you know, you're not fully alive. You're like not fully here. As long as you're holding on to these things, you know, and making them mean things about you more and more and more, right? Collecting evidence, collecting meaning, attracting the situations that mirror back to you this truth that you so, if your ego so badly wants to hold on to and validate, right. you know, because otherwise the suffering, the trauma, you know, maybe wasn't really, isn't something that really deserves your attention anymore. And, um, and it's like, you know, so what I was saying is I just love, I love to create space similarly to this, right? And be an invitation for vulnerability to share because again and again, I see that the thing that you're so afraid to share about, the thing that you like are so terrified of anybody to know about you that you're so, so embarrassed by. It's like, you don't know how many other people have that exact same experience and are like waiting for permission yes. to share it. Like you don't know how many people like are waiting to love you, you know, because they can finally see you, who you are beneath that layer of shame or beneath that layer of whatever mask you've created to protect yourself from being fully seen. People want to you know? meet you there. They want to meet you yes. there. And this is, this is a way, I mean, what you're saying like is so powerful. You can be a walking permission slip. Yes. for other people and that's how I that's how I see you Sydney when I first met you like I was just like whoa she's fully embodied and activated in her bliss and like I, I know I see myself that way but you know sometimes like the the mental loop will shut that down and so yeah. especially when I'm vulnerable especially when I own these parts the secrets the things we hide because we're like well I still have a tribe if they know this or yeah. will mom and dad approve of me if I come from this place <sighs> like walking permission slip walking permission slip you can actually liberate others you may not even yeah. know them but just them yep. seeing you like this wow what a gift mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. service yeah yeah and this is like the so bringing it back right to our this is a huge conversation for everyone that's with us right we're like in the super expansive 
collective field right now. Right. It's like, Whoa, <laughs> this is huge. And we're just dismantling an entire paradigm of control, of oppression, of repression. Because the real invitation here is to be fully embodied in your divine blueprint in your essence in your soul right fully embodied in your soul right like soul embodied in this body operating in your highest excitement your turn on your aliveness letting that guide you moment to moment step by step in natural alignment with what is meant to be experienced in your life right in your highest joy and highest magnetism right so what do people really want it's like I want life to feel good all the time. Mm. I want to feel good. I want things to feel easier. Can things feel easier? Can I experience more flow? Can I experience just like people ask me all the time, they're like, how do I experience more synchronicity? How do I activate <laughs> flow? Right? It's like, this is how. Be magnetic. Cultivate your energy. Circulate that flow. And it's not, it's not that I would say that to someone, right? There's like steps to getting there. And I think we mentioned a few of them. It's like, mind, body, spirit, soul. It's like a very holistic, I would say holistic journey to activating right. this like energetic flow. But at the end of the day, it's like you have, every, you do have everything you need in this moment within you to start to cultivate a deeper sense of align, mm. aliveness and alignment therein. Like you have it. There's nothing to get. There's no like thing to go. Like you have to go achieve to do. It's like, you have it now, it just requires um, it requires a great deal of courage in order to, I believe, face the truth of what you're really working with. Because as much as it's helpful to have mentors and guides and teachers, like we all need our support. You know, I certainly wouldn't be anywhere without all my support and community tribe to grow alongside right. with. It's like, are you willing, like to activate this new level of consciousness, are you willing to really face the truth about some of these things and and do you need support in doing that do you need to be held in a safe container in order to excavate some of these this like shameful material that's you know inhibiting your natural radiance to fully emanate right so just yes. just a question and an invitation and inquiry that might be present right now totally yeah for anyone watching this or if you found this video later like this is a beautiful practice of self-inquiry and you wonder like you know we're talking about like you said we're up in the collective field and like the witch wound and patriarchy and like, yeah, it's, it's big, it's big, but in your own life, what are the ways? And this is something you just write down a piece of paper. Are you blocking security? Do you feel safe and secure? It's where you start the foundation. And then it's like, how are you blocking pleasure? Mm -hmm. Pleasure. It, pleasure is important because that's, you want to talk about how do you experience flow? You have to enjoy what you're doing. You have to enjoy who you're with. Enjoy the thoughts and emotional states. And this doesn't always mean sexual pleasure, although sexual pleasure is the most potent there. And then the third one is your willpower. Are you blocked from willpower and decision making and choices and action in the world? Because that's that boop, boop, boop. That's that three, that three tier state from those lower centers, right? Blocked by insecurity, blocked by shame blocked by indecision right and the unwillingness to mm -hmm. act you mentioned the courage it does take courage to be this vulnerable with what i want can i tell my partner what i really want can i tell my clients my business partners what i really desire or will they leave me will i be stuck abandonment you know yeah. these programs of abandonment and shame i noticed those two come up a lot this year especially like these are mm -hmm. places where we get to put a lot of healing, a lot of energy. We get to flow it. If it wants to move, we let it move. If it wants to be held, we let it hold. Knowing though that this is not our natural state. These are things we learned or things that came onto us through conditioning and programming and we get to fucking release them. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah, totally. Yep, 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 yep. Come on. Yep. I want to I want to tune in with the audience here. I want to tune in with the audience. Looks like we had a lot of people on from me and Sydney's tribe and obviously there's a lot, huge overlap. But yeah, if you guys are vibing, like toss a fire emoji in there. I feel like that's the the, the, the emoji for this this video. Bye. And also like, you know, before we part here, like what is coming up for you guys? Is there a question, a comment, an inspiration that you're feeling? And if so, what is it? Because these are, these are deep, deep programs. 
I'm still uncovering. I know you still are too. It's not like you get over these. Like there's so much there. We just keep excavating. We're excavating these taboos about sex, money, and power. And coming online, you said it. Power is not power over, guys. Sex and money can lead to power, but it's power of turn on. Yeah. Are you turning on the on button to your mind body system every day and in every way for the benefit yes, of everyone? Love that. Mm, <laughs> yes. Feeling good. Oh, I see some beautiful, beautiful people here with us. Oh, so awesome. So many people I don't know. Yeah, what's up, I tribe? Love, love you yeah. guys. Oh, okay. Last thing, because I know this is so, so deep. like we're covering this in my one of the programs I'm running right now, and it's like pleasure. Pleasure is so, so important to attune yourself to and this is like a really really simple practice you know a lot of people especially people in the conversation of like wealth consciousness prosperity activation right. you know, more alignment with more wealth it's like if you're asking that if you're asking you know how can i make more money i'm asking what's your issue with receiving <laughs> you know because like it's not an issue of you go make more money it's how are you not receiving what is yours to just naturally receive by nature of giving this like divine contribution that naturally wants to attract mm. and magnetize incredible abundance to support your soul expression. That's just how it goes, right? So receiving tends to be a big challenge for a lot of people. And I talk about this exclusively in my book. It's especially a big thing for empaths and people who have learned through shame and abandonment trauma as children to put other people before their themselves, right? To put other people's needs first, to care about what other people think, right? As right. a survival mechanism, et cetera. Um, really important practice that you can tune in with right now to just cultivate more pleasure and receptivity and therefore magnetism in your life. And I say this all the time. So maybe you've already heard me say this. Mm. I don't care. Here's a reminder. Let's hear it again. again. It's literally the most powerful thing ever. Like actually do it. I challenge you to do this for 24 hours and see how your life changes. See how more flow becomes activated. See how differently you feel. See how it goes. And maybe this could be a practice for the rest of your life. And I call it tuning into desire, right? So you practice that intuitive muscle of really listening to what do I need in this moment? And you're doing a lot of different healing on multiple dimensions doing this practice, including inner child, including strengthening your sovereign, you know, masculine and feminine, et cetera. So throughout your day, and you can just start right now, you can create a timer on your phone, right? Third dimension, like let's be grounded. Oh time. yeah, it's grounded. Every half an hour, every half an hour, Set the little timer to go off on your phone and remind yourself, you know, in that moment, just take one minute, one minute. That's all it takes. And you, just like we did when we started this call, actually, perfect example. Tune in with your heart. I like to put my hands on my heart, my hand on my belly. Really practice breathing into those lower chakras. It's hard. Like, it's challenging for most to get really deep into the abdominal center, right? And it, and that's a whole other thing. That's so good for you because that helps to flush out your whole lymphatic system, yes. clearing the whole body channels. It's so good for you. You know, really de deeply breathe in at least three times. Presence yourself no matter what you're doing throughout the day. I'm just going to do it right now with you. <sighs> ah, I always like to make a noise. Yeah, just, like, fully clear feels the system. good. <sighs> ah, One more. Ah, <sighs> And then you just ask, you know, you, you're scanning your body and you see, you know, how do I feel right now? What's my emotional state? How's my energy? How's my energy flowing? How do I feel? Just scanning your body, tuning in with how you're feeling. You know, just tuning in and then asking yourself, is there anything that I need right now to feel supported? What would feel good to give myself? What do I desire? Whatever question resonates most with you. For me, I like to ask, what do I need right now to feel supported? And I listen, I listen for the message, whether it's a intuitive insight, a feeling in my body to breathe more space into a particular area that feels tense, you know, release my shoulders, sit up straight, put my feet on the ground, or it's in an immediate next moment action. Oh, I'm thirsty, go get some water. Oh, call that person, I need to go speak with that person. Mm. Like, whatever it is, you're gonna get an intuitive insight. I promise you will, I promise you will, you will. Do it, and you're gonna get the insight and you must take action on the direction that you receive in the moment that you receive it instantaneously do not Boom. delay and this is so healing especially if you have worthiness issues and you have been used to putting everyone else before your own needs and you feel like you can't trust yourself this is how you heal all of that 
practice that moment to moment to moment and see how synchronicities start magnifying. See how you start attracting things to support you. See how you start feeling better. See how you start feeling more joyful, more like you, right? It's yes. so fun and it's so simple. What I just told you right there literally takes a minute and it might lead you like the nonsensical intuitive insight that you get to, I mean, literally this happened with a client yesterday. She got the insight from her inner child in this exercise to draw a butterfly. And her <laughs> mind was like, no, I have to go do all this work. Yeah, yeah. And her inner child was like, no, draw a butterfly, which didn't make any, it was like out of the blue, right? And she's like, okay, I'm going to listen. I'm going to trust. I'm going to surrender. I'm going to trust that that's what I need to do right now. She drew the butterfly. What happened? And I see this happen all the time. She goes back and later when she, after she drew the butterfly, just a few minutes, checked her computer, Someone got back to her right away who she was expecting to like hear from, you know, someone sent her money that owed her money. Everything just felt like this instantaneous flow. All the things that she thought she had to do just like came to her, oh. it just happened. We're just there, you know, and this is what happens when we honor our desire and honor ourselves. Right. And we just come into that presence. Everything is taken care of. And it really is like there's no bypassing here. You're doing the work by taking care of yourself and doing this like multi-layered healing in this action, no matter how simple it sounds, it's very profound and continue that practice and see how your life shifts, see how your energy shifts. And I'd love to hear from you. If you do that for a day, I'd love to know what comes up for you. Totally. Totally. I wonder if anyone who just did it right now, like, did you get an intuitive hit of something to do after this broadcast? Like mm -hmm. this, I love that you brought this up, Sydney, because this is so simple. Like it's yeah. as simple as asking what do I want? What do I need? What do I desire? And then doing it. What a concept, right? Yeah. What a concept, like unbelievable. And this is, this is so powerful. Like I've, I've been like on a ride with those intuitive hits this year, committed to them more than ever. And what I've noticed is that it's my mind that wants to come into play and try to like shut down the story, right? Don't draw a butterfly. Yeah. That's stupid. You need to hustle. Yeah. It's like, what? Don't go for a walk. You don't need to go for a walk. You need to stay on your computer. Oh, you should, <laughs> You want to call your mom? No, don't call your mom. Like, you have time for that later tonight. It's like, holy, like, I'm becoming aware of the ways in which my mind and voices that aren't even mine, right? It's just things I was told or things I read that are taking me out of my desire. Yes. Whoa. And then I wonder about sex, money, and power and how they manifest. Well, to turn those on and really turn the key in that ignition I got to do what I desire and feel and what I need and be unashamed to ask for it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Nailed it. Yeah. Wow. Totally. Oh my God. There's, there's like, and I, I'm just so present to how like, we're just barely like scratching. Barely. The surface. Like we barely even got into it. Like we we're going to have to do another one because I'm just like, totally. there's more of everything that we alluded to. It was just like the, the, tip of the iceberg and there's like so much I just I'm so present to how much um, I know both of us you know have been through some deep healing and we have a lot of different wisdom to share and there's just like there's so much that I maybe even take for granted that I've you know practiced that I've learned that I've received on this path to feel you know to feeling I feel so good now it's like a, it's a blessing it's a miracle to feel right. good more often than not you know? yes. it's like a total miracle I'm so present to that and I want to serve others in learning and understanding yes. how, you know, how, because there is a how. It's not as simple as, well, just choose a good feeling, choose a good thought. No, there's like layers here. We're there's so many here. layers, like, right. We're going to like face the truth and there's things you can do to take care of yourself now, to start feeling better now and in the long run to start feeling good as more of your like natural state of being all the time. Right, right. I love that you brought that up. Like this is just the beginning, Sam. This is the yeah. surface layer of identifying the aliveness we want and the blocks that prevent it and then start taking that tiny breath and action in the direction of desire. Now, all the other strategy and tactical stuff, yeah, there's a lot. And I love what you said, no bypassing. Like, I've, yeah. I've been a bliss bunny in the past when I first got into the community. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen people do it. I still see clients tell the, themselves this story. There's real work. You're going to have to face things that are uncomfortable because that's where your growth edge is. That's a wall you've set up for yourself to not feel these things. And guess what? What's on the other side? Activation, purpose, clarity, and pleasure. Not an ungrounded pleasure, but a pleasure in knowing I am serving my divine life mission. Yes.
Wow. That's it. Wow. So yeah, in closing here, like first off, anyone watching this, please share this video out, tag it up. Me and Sydney have a very special energy and signature between us, obviously. And we're cooking up something very potent and beautiful. So your feedback on this video is going to help us understand what the next step is. Like you said, Sydney, I feel like we have to do another one because we just barely started. Yeah, give us your questions. Like, okay, listen, for anything that we just downloaded you with, because it's like, I know we both have such a wide repertoire and, ex and sense of experience that we could share and teach and guide on and practices and all that stuff. And I want to be like as relevant. I actually, I'll be very honest with you. Like, I want to be challenged by like yes. awesome questions that particularly maybe challenge me to get like really concise or like really detailed to like give you some super clear practical direction. So any, any question, especially like a really challenging question, I like fully welcome, fully Please. receive. And I'm so inspired to support you. Like, I can't wait. This is so much fun. <laughs> totally. Totally. I, I will echo that. Like, I want to go to my growth edge with you. Yeah. I, I want to step into more sexual, powerful, magnetic mastery and make money doing it from an aligned, integrous place. And I want to be, Woo! I want to be fun, comfortable too. So it's like, yeah. oh, okay, here's my edge. Oh, this is whoa, this is a lot. But it's like, ooh, but it feels good, and I'm of service. Yeah. Boom. Yes, 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 yes. Keep pushing that edge and see that there's really actually no edge <laughs> there isn't there's no ceiling there's no limit to this stuff there's no limit we can ex keep expanding keep expanding as long as our feet are on the earth that's it well sydney this is transmission one this is super potent <laughs> anyone in here stay tuned we're going to do another transmission and we're actually going to evolve this further so if you're not already following one of us follow the other one because i know we got cross tribe in here and stay tuned, guys, because we're going to be launching another one of these very soon, probably next week. Sydney, as always, sister. Yay. I love you so much. So much thank love. You, thank you. Thank you, fam. <laughs> love you guys. See you very soon. Peace and power. Adios. Adios. Aloha.